participants. Go ahead. All right. And this will be video streaming with the Raspberry Pi 5. So, so if you guys want to get started, go for it. All right. Does that look good? Looks good. Perfect. All right. So video streaming with the Raspberry Pi 5. We got right. me, Ben, uh, Aiden, and Karim. Uh, so a little bit of what's going to happen. We got, uh, we were doing some investigation with using the new Raspberry Pi 5 that got announced a few months ago. I think it was October or September. And then um, some of the things that we found, some advantages and disadvantages, there are uh, some in uh, both of those categories. So um, as some of you probably know, we've been working on our own edition as just another thing that exists and people can pick and choose and all that. And so uh, with the Pi 5, uh, it's still going to be a one command installation and it's fairly quick. And the whole goal is to reduce the amount of processing that is done on the Pi itself. And so then we can reduce the amount of batteries that we have in flight, or um, we can just have a longer flight uh, battery life, basically. Um, so uh, with the new Pi 5, uh, for those that don't know, uh, it has two camera ports on it instead of just one, like the Pi 4 does. And that the Pi 4 is what has been distributed to teams all around uh, the country. And uh, so, but with the Pi 5, this would allow native uh, dual camera streams uh, without uh, an ArduCam hat. As some uh, teams have let us know, uh, they have either broken their hat or it's gone for a little swim in the water and it no longer works. And uh, there has been some difficulty with obtaining uh, ArduCam hats for a reasonable price or at all. And so uh, we were just trying to look at some alternatives. And so with the two ports, uh, there's there are two independent streams. So you can switch back and forth between them. Uh, and then you can control each camera as its own um, and, or you could have both at the same time and or you could have different kinds of cameras on either. Uh, we haven't tested it, but theoretically you could probably have an ArduCam uh, stereo hat and you could also have another set of cameras going on with it. And uh, then there's also uh, an increase of bandwidth that we have noticed with uh, the cameras that we are using, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but they are higher resolution uh, cameras, so naturally more pixels. Uh, so you're going to have to be mindful of that, and that could play into how well your stream is going to be received. And uh, so, um, uh, so we have noticed that there is an increase in power consumption with the Pi 5, which uh, was kind of something that we thought was going to happen given that the power brick that comes uh, or you're supposed to buy for the Pi 5 is uh, has a higher wattage. And uh, but when we were doing measurements, it's about four watts in increase uh, up from 7.8 watts of the normal system. And that that includes the ubiquity uh, modem in that calculation. So the Pi itself, uh, it uses about 4.9 watts on a normal stream. And then the ubiquity for that specific bandwidth is about 2.9 to 3.5 watts. So about 8 watts total for that system. And then as kind of a worst case scenario, we're streaming as many pixels as we can. And we're really seeing how much data that the Pi itself can process. Uh, so that brought us to about 12, 13, sometimes 14 watts, but those were very, very quick spikes. And uh, so uh, we have done some calculations for that four watt increase approximately. And with the existing system, uh, there should be about four hours uh, of battery life in there, which uh, if you're turning on your battery boxes or your payloads, uh, very close to when you're actually launching should be plenty of time. We 
uh, still a need to do some investigation with if that's actually uh, re real numbers. This is all theoretical. Uh, we haven't had time to do that, unfortunately. Uh, on the pic uh, the picture on the right is the camera module three that's made by Raspberry Pi, same people that make the Raspberry Pi itself. And uh, so we we're looking at the wide angle cameras. And uh, these are different than Articam cameras. So we do also need new mounts. Um, but uh, a good thing is the Articam hat is no longer needed. Uh, the some other features that are kind of cool about the Pi is uh, the Pi 5 is there's a built in real time clock and you just use a little coin cell battery, which is at the top on the right. And the, it's just a couple dollars. And so then now we can get real time stamps on our videos that are recorded. One of the big problems that we've had are we record videos, but we don't really know when this was. And uh, it would be kind of cool if you said it. And then uh, we just know approximately, we haven't done any tests to see how well it keeps the time, but uh, it probably will be good enough for our circumstances. And there's an onboard power button. So uh, shutting it down will be a lot better uh, rather than just pulling power. Pulling power uh, is very uh, good at uh, destroying files if they're currently being written to. And uh, we don't want to have that, especially since we only get really one shot at the clips. Um, so uh, that, that's just a very high level uh, overview of what we have explored. We have converted our main edition to uh, take advantage of the dual camera setup, and we have been able to get uh, two video streams out so I can show you. So uh, in this picture on the right, uh, we've, uh, we have we didn't line them up so that they uh, are really connected, but they show uh, 120 degree field of view uh, on from each camera. And so unfortunately we'll not be achieving a 360 degree uh, view like was hoped originally, but this view allows for a lot uh, easier understanding of what we're actually seeing as uh, we've heard that the very ov oval uh, outputs that we've had uh, can be kind of confusing for those that don't really understand what they're looking at. And so uh, for us, if we're looking at it all the time, oh, we, we know what's going on. And uh, so back to the conclusion side. Um, so there, there's a lot of similar uh, similarities between the Pi 5 and the Pi 4. And uh, then there's some disadvantages and uh, advantages of some clearer video, but you are struggling with battery life probably a little bit more and you need to be a little bit more conscious of when you're plugging stuff in. Do you have anything else you guys want to add? Um, you can, if you have the two video streams um, in separate windows, it's pretty easy to just use like OBS and put them right next to each other. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, and offloading uh, some of the processing from the Pi to uh, the laptop itself, uh, so by having those independent streams, you can just have it uh, or, uh, coordinated to however you want, or you could switch between one camera view is the full screen and then the other camera view is another full screen as well. So you can have a bigger video. Do you guys have so Does anyone have any questions for us? Oh, yes. I have question. a question. Um, I'm wondering if there are any thermal issues uh, here. You said there's increased power consumption, four watts. Um, the CPU, I, I suppose, you know, uh, will perhaps get hotter. Have you thought about this when you fly it in the stratosphere? Uh, we we have uh, thought about this a little bit. The, the 4 watt increase isn't directly from the Pi itself necessarily. It, it includes the ubiquity. So, um, I, I think it was about 2.5 to 3 watts for the Pi itself, which is still a, quite a substantial increase. Um, but we... That was something else that we need to actually test and fly and see if this will actually be a problem. Um, and so some of the software things that we are doing are intended to 
bring down what uh, processing we actually do need to do. And um, the, uh, the Montana's video streaming system was really overheating pies that we have noticed. And uh, um, then I, we, yeah, I, I guess I don't, I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we, we need to try it. Yeah. And it might work on the bench, you know, yeah. from an atmospheric pressure, but you get it in the stratosphere, you know, uh, where it's a near vacuum and, and you may have issues. Anyway, thanks. So the photo you have on this slide shows the cooler, right? The fan that you can buy separate from the pie. Are you planning to use that or no? Uh, yes, that is our plan to put that on. Um, we, we haven't looked too much into what other options there are, especially since the, the Pi 5 is very new and accessories are still being designed and manufactured and are maybe even not even released yet. Some of the things that the Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation, they haven't even released their power over Ethernet adapter. Um, uh, I've been, it's been brought to my attention that it is much colder up higher. And so uh, that might help, hopefully. Okay, in the testing we've done on the ground, we haven't had issues with the overheating down here. Yeah. It is, the cooling systems have worked to keep it at reasonable temperatures. So I'd assume that unless it was getting suffocated by insulation or something, it would be okay on that front when it went up high. Well, you just might want to thermally couple it to something else, yeah. you know, heat sink, uh, because, you know, you only get radiative heat transfer, you know, mm -hmm. up there. So anyway, in, the, yeah. in, the chat, in the chat, Bill Brown mentioned that heat, heat sinks might be the way to go. Okay. Right. The the, the fan won't help you at altitude. Well, the fan <laughs> yeah. doesn't help at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have no air to move. So. Yeah. Right. Are you I always to... expose the, the fins of the heat sink to the outside on a on a high power payload uh, just uh, cut a hole in the payload and leave the heat sink uh, fins exposed to the outside that will help a lot the fan won't do you much good as you get up uh, on higher altitudes radiate to space or near space yeah, yeah we're still confident that overheating probably wouldn't be an issue yeah we think that's okay we, we do need to try it and unfortunately in, in maine it is snowy on the ground and very very cold and uh it's hard to recover balloons in these circumstances, as I think other people have uh, said earlier today that uh, they're experiencing same uh, climates right now. You know, do you think you'll be able to fly this before April, or you're not even sure you'll get any test flights in? Uh, Good, but that's not really up to us. That's at a, a level of management above us. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. Um, Hi, Noah. This okay. is Randy from Montana, and my okay. Noah has a question for you. Oh, perfect. Let's hear it. So, um, has the main software fixed the issue where if the Ubiquiti radio got disconnected in flight, the video wouldn't get saved correctly? Uh, with Oh, so that's talking about the, the ARP requests. She, that, that was... We were able to resolve that with the delay, right? I think at, at the beginning when it starts up, when they're not connected. And um, so then by running that command later in time. Yeah. So yeah. yes, we have solved that issue. Also, could you uh, send me a contact uh, in the uh, chat? Can you send me an email contact for your group? Uh, so sure. uh, I would like to find out more about the Raspberry Pi, and uh, I also get to Maine a lot during the summer. So, are you in Orono? Yes, right now. We'll yeah, we can. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, we are out of time. We do so need to get on to our next talk.